In today's episode, Chef Kendra and her special guest, Elliot Moskowitz, will show us how to make a delicious cholent using Prairie Street Prime's kosher Miami cut short ribs. It's like winter in a bowl. <laughs> it smells amazing. Oh my God, it melts in your mouth. Welcome to the Prairie Street Prime Culinary Kitchen. I'm your chef today, Chef Kendra, and today we're making cholent. Wait, I actually don't know how to make chalan. I wonder, oh wait, I'm gonna call on a good friend of mine, the founder and CEO, friends, of Prairie Street Prime, the man behind the meat, Mr. Elliot Moskowitz. Where? <laughs> Elliot! <laughs> Where did you come from? This is a TV set. <laughs> Goodbye. No, 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 no. Get up here. He's always behind the camera telling me what to do. So I thought it'd be a great idea for you to tell me what to do on camera. So that way people can see how I learn everything. Excellent. So we're going to start today with chont. Chont is a dish that Jewish people have eaten on the Sabbath day on Shabbat lunch for hundreds of years. Right. Why? because they can't cook on the Sabbath, which starts Friday night. So they put up a long, slow cooking dish Friday that when they come home from synagogue on Saturday, Shabbat lunch, it's all ready for them. So we're going to show you how to make chont today in a crock pot. Can I ask you a question? How did they used to do it 100 years ago? So there's something called a blech that people could put on the top of a stove top. It's kind of like indirect cooking at a slow thing that you could prep some of it before the Sabbath starts and then continue it afterwards or done in the oven or different ways for different time periods of what the technology was, whether you're using wood or, or other things. But in general, it's something that's put up. Some people cook it a lot before the Sabbath starts, so it's almost ready, and then they coast. Some people get it ready right before, and then they go. One of the major factors why this is such an interesting dish is that how much time does it take to cook? The problem is the Jewish day starts the night before. So during the winter times in New York, for example, Sabbath would start at four o'clock, right? So that means you have to be prepped up. You're not eating till 12 o'clock the following day. So you have a much longer cook. Now, what if it's the summer and the Sabbath starts at eight o'clock? or when I lived in Europe at 11 o'clock, then you have different time, it's gonna be a slower cook. So part of what we're gonna talk about today is managing the time and how you deal with that. Brilliant, I love this. Okay, so let's talk about what we have here ingredient-wise, because obviously there's a lot for us to think about method-wise. So now I wanna talk about the ingredients. What all do we have here? And is this traditional versus non-traditional? You know me a while, is anything completely traditional no. with me? Not really, but this is kind of actually the best chont I ever had was taught to me by a good friend of mine in London who was a vegetarian and never <laughs> tasted her own chont actually. But Yvette Goldberg was one of the best I ever had. I so this it. is just time of use and experimenting and what works with me. But like everything at Prairie Street Prime, it starts with the ingredients. And you could throw things in a chant and it comes out, but if you want to have a magnificent experience, as everything that we do on this channel, you start with the best meat possible. That's right. Okay, so let's talk about the meat. We are using our Miami cut short ribs. They are phenomenal. I'm actually gonna let you talk about the meat because they're tired of hearing me talk about it. And this guy's like the professor. Well, from what I understand from the YouTube comments, no one's tired to listen to you at all. <laughs> <laughs> and based on how many views and subscribers we get, but the, the meat, like everything we do at Prairie Street Prime, is our, we're the luxury meat company, and one of the most important things is for us to source the finest quality. You've talked about it in many videos, but here you're looking at 
Miami cut short ribs. So short ribs can be cut in different ways. But look at this marbling. That's what gives you the flavor. The outside fat just melts a little. But this is what gives you that magnificent flavor. So we cut them like an inch and a half thick on purpose. Because if you do it too small, what happens in like a stew or a slow cook thing, it just disappears on you and you really don't even find the meat. So this was the width that we found that works really well. And we're gonna cut these up into little cubes. So why don't you take this third slice? Perfect. Just right down. Okay, these are good. Okay, so before we play with the ingredients, the first thing we have to deal with is water management that okay. I call, okay? So uh, traditionally, when people started, when I grew up and people started to use the new versions of crock pots that were a new thing, the husband's job after the Shabbat was to stand over the sink and spend like 45 minutes just <laughs> working at that chomp pot mixed with beans. It's hard crusted. It's been on for hours after the Shabbat is over. And that was like not the greatest job. It doesn't so, sound like the job that I would want. Right. No. So we just use something called a chalom bag, which are Great. these heavy duty plastic bags that are meant not to melt but to make sure there's no problem and they don't break, because if they break, you've defeated the whole purpose, right. you want to put like a, a water layer okay. before we do that. So let's lift that up and put some water, so it's like about half, three quarters of an inch at the bottom. Okay, so now you could put the bag in and you're not going to really wrap the bag around, you're just going to kind of keep it standing okay. up because it'll be much easier to put the ingredients in. Perfect. Okay, now within the chant, we're gonna to have to put a certain amount of water, and that goes back to the original concept of how much time do you have in the cook, and what temperature are you putting that on, okay? okay? So now we're in the summer months, so let's just call that normal, because people are putting this up by, let's say, six o'clock. So we're gonna put, we would normally put a base of water in there, but one of the elements of the chant are the beans. And beans, this is a mix. You could go in your stores and get chalk mix, but it's a mix of kidney, lima, other beans. But the one of the most important and dangerous components is the barley, because barley sucks up water like crazy. So if you would put this mix together and throw it right into your crock pot, then in effect you have a water management problem because that barley is going to use so much of the water that by the time you wake up the next day, your chant is dried out. Right. So there's two ways to do that. In this case, we soak the beans the night before. Yeah. Okay, And there's no problem that there's excess water because we're going to all pour that back. Okay. But if you're ever in a jam and you just come home from work and you have to whip one together, another fail-safe method would be to put it in a microwave for 10 minutes and get that. And that also will drain down the water and get that started. So now the next step is we have, we have the ingredients prepped and there's also a certain art into the layering of which items you wanna put in first. Right. If you put in beans at the bottom, it's just gonna sit there at the bottom and not really do anything. So we're gonna start with the star of the show, our Miami ribs. And just put them any which way, just put them down in there. Okay. Just lay them down there. The next big items are the... Potatoes. Wow. And these are Idaho, Idaho potatoes. potatoes. Some people put a sweet potato in. I personally don't like that because I think it makes the chong too sweet. Okay. And in general, except for burnt ends or certain items, I don't like meat super sweet. It's just enough to have some yeah. flavor. And you actually have me cut them nice and thick so that way they don't just melt and dissipate in the Correct. Chunk. So if you made this like tiny little things, then basically, and that's why the meat we cut 
these types of size of chunks right. because if you make it too small, it's just going to disappear. And you'll see people the next day when they eat chunks, they're kind of picking for the meat, they're picking for the potatoes, <laughs> they're picking for their favorite things. And the next thing is we're going to need are the beans. So we don't know how much water we're going to need, but you already have a decent amount with those, so why not waste that and put that in there. Okay. So you see how I'm pulling that up and just kind of flattening and I'm watching my water levels. So sometimes I like to put a little kick in the chon to add a little spice to that. So these are some of my favorite Polish kosher sausages mm. that have a really nice kick to them. And I also like them to sit on the top. Perfect. All right, so I'm just going to push these down a little, but I'm not stirring to mix it up. Right. Just trying to check the water levels of where they're on. Okay, so now we're going to add a few ingredients. Everybody has their own way of doing it, oh, and yeah. that's what a chant is. It's a mix of your best ideas, basically. So this is my ideas, and so let's start with some chili flakes. Now, less is more in a certain way until you get a feel for that, because okay. someone, you blow them out, you haven't done a great job. So here... Got some of that, and that between this and the sausages is my kick. Okay, how about adding some of those garlic? Okay, so this is about three cloves of garlic just crushed and chopped. Just put it all around a little. Okay. Okay, we're gonna put a tiny bit of that honey in there. Now why, if I don't like sweet, am I putting a tiny bit? Because it glazes the potatoes. If you put like a half a teaspoon in there. When this is done tomorrow, you'll have beautiful golden mm. brown potatoes. All right, I'm just gonna do a little quick drizzle. A couple pinches of onion powder in there. Okay. I personally don't like whole onions because then the onions kind of fall apart in the chant and people are eating like onion pieces. Okay. I don't think that's great. A little bit more? A tiny bit more, it's good. Okay, some dill, some black pepper, and some coarse salt. How much dill can I put in? That's more of a flay. It's more of like a presentation thing, so you can kind of spread that across the top. I think that's great. Okay. A little salt. It's perfect. Good. It's enough. A little of coarse pepper. Always use coarse kosher salt and coarse pepper. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put a tiny bit of that barbecue sauce and forget about the ketchup. Okay. Okay. We don't really need to worry about, you know, that the ingredients mix because if you do that, you'll mess up the whole layering process right. and at the end of the day, it's all going to melt and cook together. Okay. So now it's, well, right now it's not Friday afternoon and it's in the middle afternoon, but let's say it was summer and it was about 6 o'clock and we're going to eat this about 18 hours later. I'd want to at least have enough water in here to kind of cover everything that's in here. Yeah. Okay, and so the way crock pots work is some are manual and you could set them for the full time. This one you could set for 20 hours, but it keeps warm for afterwards. Okay. So once you're good, you're good. Why don't you add a little water? Now, if you were doing this in the deep of the winter and starting early, you'd want to be maxing out the uh, water as much as, you can, as, much as you can and sometimes depending on when you start it you might want to start it on a higher temperature and then right before the sabbath make it lower okay got it. and like an oven or like any cooking appliance your experience will vary depending on the quality of the product and how that works so it's yeah. a trial and error thing the worst that will happen is you have some excess water so after you take out um, the product, that's fine. So we have all this together. Yep. Now you have one more step is you need to turn the crock pot on. I do. Okay, so since this is a shorter cook, we're going to go for high heat the whole ah. time. So why don't you put it on for 20 hours and set it to high. Okay, so we're done. All you need to do okay. now is cover it. Okay. Some people might put a piece of aluminum foil if it drips over, but with our water line, we're not going to have any of that issue. And you see that I'm not, the way I do it is I'm not wrapping this around the sides yeah. because that's going to get hot too, uh -huh. okay? okay? So I just do this lift up, okay? 
Perfect. And I try to see if I can not wake up at four in the morning by the smell. <laughs> Calm down and do a little A little thing. taste test? Quality control, concerned Quality about control. that, but yeah. so far a few hundred chunks it's worked. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going. We're going and then next we'll have to taste and see so how it excited. works. Okay, great. I can't wait. Okay, so it's Shabbat lunch and we're gonna share chant. So excited. But we're not, right? Because we don't film on Shabbat. So right. there's no way that's going to happen. So what did we do? We made another chant the day before. So we could show you today what that looks like. But just a little fun fact. In general, these crock pots have removable inserts. Right. But you're not allowed to serve on the Sabbath from the crock pot directly because that's considered cooking. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do when we're finished is lift this, and we've done with the cooking process. It smells so amazing. So the first thing you have to do, quality control, is give a smell. Oh my gosh! It's like winter in a bowl. <laughs> it smells amazing. And actually, there is a truth to that. Some people have a policy that during the hot summer months, they don't make chalent. I don't but know. I would eat it. I would eat it in the summer also. I eat it anytime. Yeah. The other thing you can do is use a straining spoon. So we want right. to try to scoop off that. And now it's all been mixed. Great. And I can just go right into the serving bowl? Sure. Perfect. And you could either bring that to the table or you serve people Beautiful. like that. Oh, this looks so good. So show good. them what a spoonful looks like that. You have that mix that of that beautiful meat, the oh. sausage, the potatoes. The water management is excellent. It's perfect. And that's my favorite meat to use for chomp. The Miami ribs Very. has the right cut, the right thickness, the great flavor. Mm -hmm. And people think, oh, like, oh, let me take some low quality meat and put that in because it's just a stew. No, it's not just a stew. No. You take this and you have great method and great product and you have a chant that people will come back again and again. I have a feeling after this recipe, even you, Kendra, might make chant. I am absolutely <laughs> going to make chant. So what I like to do is, obviously, we're going to start with the star of the shell. And that's those Miami ribs. And, the, and that, another great thing about the ribs is these little bones, because they have marrow in them, and they're thin enough and they've been softened because of the slow cook mm -hmm. that you really could actually bite into them. Here's some of the sausages, and we have some potatoes, oh and we have some meat all over that, and a little sad. mix. Water management was good. Having a little more is okay, as long as it's not saucy. This is for you, sir. But too little is fatal. This is just beautiful. Sir? Well done. I need the Miami cut short rib. Oh my God. It's just, it melts in your mouth. Everything just falls apart, but it's so, even with that long cook, it doesn't like lose its meatiness. It just enhances with the rest of the ingredients. It's delicious. Because also it has to do with the size of the meat. Yeah. That if you take something that's, that's just right. too small of a piece, you're not going to have that. What you have there would just be one big melting yeah. pot of everything. Yeah. There. No, this is fabulous. It's not too soupy, too saucy, but it's definitely not dried out. It's so good. I have an idea for you. Okay, I'm ready. You, we've done about 50 videos on Prairie Street Prime Culinary yeah. Kitchen. I think I know what I'm doing. What about we switch jobs? What about... I, I get I, to I, direct? No, you get to run the whole company. <laughs> <laughs> you get to find the meat. You get to figure about fulfillment. You get to go on a plane every week. Right. You deal with women telling you what to do all day long. <laughs> you take that and I'll cook for you. What do you think? I'm down with it. Okay, Only, excellent. Only if you make me chalk. Anytime. I'll make you chalk. I'll make you anything. <laughs> I think the main point, though, here at Prairie Street Prime is it's a little counterintuitive to people. Why do we spend so much time and effort and money and resources and a fantastic team that everybody can see that's behind us to make these videos? 
It's because we want to enhance your experience. Yeah. We want to build that confidence. We want that you could buy our excellent meat and be just as comfortable, whether you want to go simple, you want to go medium, you want to go advanced. Right. We're with you the whole way. And we'd love to hear from you, our audience. What can we do to enhance your luxury kosher experience at Prairie Street Prime? Thank you so much for indulging with me. I'm going to hand it back to the serious chef and go back where I belong, behind the camera. <laughs> Thank you and enjoy. Subscribe to our channel now and set your notifications so you don't miss our latest recipes and chef-led tutorials. Then head over to prairiestreetprime.com to shop for your next big meal.